Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Barakat the Yahweh, Barakat the Yahweh Shai, Call Halal, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Rakakadash. Yahweh, that's the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly knows as God. Yahweh Shai, that's the name of uh, the beloved Son of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly knows as Jesus. All right, his true name is Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay? Bashim Rakakadash, which means in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and who has taught us this truth. Shalawam wa barakim lahabakarium. Peace and blessings to the elect. Okay? In Lord's will, this video is edifying. Um, go ahead and start with the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5. It's lock here, not 10. Chapter 5, verse 1, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Okay? Now, this is talking about our earthly tabernacle. Okay? It's talking about this body that we're in. Okay? Because a tabernacle, all the tabernacle is, is just essentially, essentially it's a dwelling. All right? It could be a house. It could be a temple. It could be a, a tent, a booth. A tabernacle is essentially uh, a, a building. Okay? And we know that body goes back to the Latin, boldeg. Okay? Which means house. All right? So the earthly house is, a, is really is these bodies that we dwell in. All right? And what? If this body was to, it was to dissolve, we have in the heavens a spiritual body. Okay? It says, verse 2, it says, For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Okay? And, and if once, once the Lord... Uh, Gave us the realization, all right, that we actually have a spiritual body and that the Lord is going to change us. He's going to bless us to have a new body. All right. Every day we groan. All right. It says for in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. All right. So day to day, every day we wake up, we, we cry unto the Lord because we got aches and pains. All right. We get sick. All right. We, uh, we don't do the things that we want to do and the things that we don't want to do, we do. Okay, we constantly got to fight and struggle in this earthly body. So every day, all right, we groan to be changed and to be clothed in that in that new heavenly body that the Lord promised us. All right, this is First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the power and father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, which according to his abundant mercy have begotten us again unto a lively hope. By, re by the resurrection of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach from the dead. All right, because when Yahweh Shai was resurrected from the dead, he was changed and he was given that new glorious body, that body from heaven, okay? And now that our Lord, all right, was given that, that, that resurrection, he was given that body, all right, now we have that lively hope. We have that same hope. We have the hope to be clothed in that same body in which our Lord is clothed in right now on the right hand of the heavenly Father. Verse 4 says to it, inheritance incorruptible, because the body that we're going to get is going to be incorruptible, okay? The body that we're going to get is going to be incorruptible, and we're going to inherit it, all right? Because what? We're going to get the bodies that the sons of God are supposed to dwell in, man, all right? If we're, the, if we're Yahshua, if we're the prince of the power, all right, if we're sons, that means we, we are going to receive an inheritance from the Father, Okay, and the Heavenly Father, the inheritance in which we're going to receive, not only is it the kingdom of heaven, all right, but it's going to be those godly, angelic-like bodies that we're going to receive and we're going to dwell in on the earth. All right, when we rule and reign with our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, we're going to be an angelic, godlike form. All right, it says to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. We read in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, that, Let's get it real quick. Let's get it again. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5. All right. Verse 1, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of the Most High and a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. All right. So we're waiting. So in the heavens, we got, we got a body waiting for us. Okay. That new body that we're going to receive. Okay. And in 1 Peter, it says, 
reserved in heaven for you. All right. It's reserved. OK. Verse five it says who are kept by the power of the most high through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. So when we get saved and delivered. All right. That's when we're actually going to be changed into those bodies that we're waiting for. All right. It's a Jude chapter six. It says and the angels which kept not their first estate. All right. And who are those angels? Those angels are the Allah Hayyim, All right. The Allah Hayyim are the angels that were with the heavenly, that were with Yahweh Shai in the beginning that formed all things. It says, which kept not their first estate. All right. Meaning those angelic godlike bodies in the beginning. It says, but left their own habitation. All right. And what habitation did they leave? They, they, they dwell on the earth in, in earthly tabernacles. All right. It says, he have reserved an everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. And Lord's will will be part of the elect. This scripture is, written, is speaking of us. All right. We're in these uh, chains of darkness. These bodies are like chains of darkness, man. Okay. It says, unto the judgment of the great day. But we're going to be changed when that great day comes, when the Lord returns. When the Lord, Yahusha Mashiach, returns, uh, he's going to change our bodies. Okay. And it's going to be like his... His glorious body. All right. This is Philippians chapter three, verse 20. It says, for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord, Yahusha Mashiach. So we're looking for Yahusha to return. All right. That's why the scriptures say looking for and hastening unto the coming of our Lord. All right. Because the coming of our Lord, it represents so many different things. It represents the end all right, of these other nations ruling over us. All right. And the beginning of. Of, of the kingdom of the nation of Israel being established on the earth. All right. But it also represents a new, a change. We're going to be changed. Our form, our body, it's going to be changed. All right. Verse 21 it says, who shall change our vile body? Because the body that we're in right now is vile. All right. It's, it's susceptible to sin. It's, it's susceptible to going off. All right. It has dark, evil thoughts. Okay. The bodies that we dwell in right now get sick. All right. You can have an allergic reaction to things. The bodies that we're in right now is corruptible. It dies. But when the Lord comes, all those things are going to be done away with. When the Lord comes, we're not going to age. We're not going to get old. All right. We're not going to feel any aches or pains. We're going to be perfect. All right. So that's why we're, we're constantly groaning every day. Like, Lord, come back. Change us. All right. And that's what we're patiently waiting for. So Philippians 3 and 21, it says, Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? See? We want to be do we want to we want our body to be fashioned like the like the glorious body that our Lord dwells in right now. Because our Lord, He has that glorious body on the right hand side of the Heavenly Father Yahweh. It says, According to the work whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Okay? Now, from there, I forgot the precept I wanted to go to. Um, Philippians. I'll go to 1 Corinthians 15. All right. Lord's will comes back to me. All right. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I'm going to read. This whole chapter is really good. Um, but I'm going to read verse. Uh, let's see. Bear with me, bear with me. All right, uh, let's see. I'm going to read verse, I'm going to jump around. All right, this is 1 Corinthians 15 and 40. It says, there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. All right, so heavenly bodies, that's the celestial. Terrestrial bodies, earthly bodies, the bodies we're in right now. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. All right, uh, the heavenly bodies, all right, the bodies that the angels are in, all right. They don't do the things that we do. All right. They don't have to have sex and eat and go to sleep and things of that nature. That's what it means when it says in the glory of terrestrial is another. All right. I'm going to jump down. OK. And verse 48, it says, as is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. It says, and, it, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And we have borne the image of the earthly. See? We have borne the image of the earthly. That's what we're in right now, these earthly tabernacles. It says, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. 
Because even though the kingdom of heaven is, is on earth, all right, we're going to have heavenly bodies. So we're still going to do uh, things like have sex, have children, and eat. All right, the scriptures talk about how we're going to eat and drink with the Lord at the table. And the scriptures talk about how the Lord is going to make us a strong nation, meaning we're going to have lots of children. All right, but we're going to have and we're going to bear the image of the heavenly. We're going to have a, a, a heavenly body. All right. So that what's that, that what's, so that's like an extraterrestrial, a super earthly body. You see? Verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. So we, we're not going to be able to be in the kingdom of the Most High in a corruptible body, in a corruptible state. All right? We're going to be incorruptible. Okay? Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All right? And the mystery is that we're not going to all die. All right? Some brothers are going to be martyrs. Okay? But what? We're going to all be changed. All right, that's the mystery. This is a mystery that the world doesn't know. Only, only the few, all right, that the Lord is, is supping with and dealing with knows this mystery. Okay, verse 52, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So in the, in the twinkling of an eye, click snap of the finger. All right, and the scripture just came to me that I wanted to get before this. So I'm going to get that. I'm going to end it on that scripture. All right. But when the Lord returns, when Yahweh Shah Hamashiach returns, okay, those that died in his name are going to be raised up, boom, they're going to be changed and corruptible. They're going to have that glorious body that they've been groaning and longing for. Verse 53, for this, for this, and all of us are going to be changed, all right? Those that are dead and those that are alive, those that receive that salvation are going to be changed. It says, and we're going to dwell with the Lord forever. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. It's a must. The Lord said we must. So we, we have to be changed. We're going to be changed. All right. The scriptures say what? The word of the Lord doesn't go out void. The scriptures also say that what? The heavenly father is not a man that he shall lie. Neither the son of man that he shall repent. Shall he say and shall he not make it good? So this is going to happen and we have faith on it. Okay. It says for this corruptible must put on and corruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. We no longer will die again. When the Lord returns, that's the end of death for the nation of Israel. All right, all of Israel is going to be immortals when the Lord returns, man. All right, that's why, matter of fact, I had to get this scripture first. All right, that's why this scripture is so powerful right here. This is Isaiah 45 and 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. All right. That's how that salvation is going to be everlasting. When the Lord comes and delivers us from captivity all right, and delivers us from this low state and he sets us on high. All right. We're going to actually be immortal. So we're going to be able to enjoy that salvation forever because we're no longer going to die. man. Death is swallowed up in victory. All right. Now, it's the book of... Uh, 1 John chapter 2. And the reason why death is swallowed up in victory, it's actually verse chapter 3, is because what? We're no longer going to sin anymore. So we're no longer going to have to die. If you don't sin, you don't die. All right? And that's why we got to get those bodies because those bodies are not going to be able to go off. The Lord said what? He's going to write, all right, his laws, statutes, and commandments in our inward parts, in our hearts. So we will never be able to go off. So that means we will never die. We're not going to age. None of those different things. All right, I actually got to get this real quick. All right, Wisdom of Solomon, and then I'm, I'm going to end it on the first John. All right, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse, uh, let's see, verse 23. It says, For the heavenly Father created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. You see, the Lord created us to live forever. All right, and when it's talking about man, obviously it's talking about the chosen men, the chosen line, the, the Israelites. The, the Lord created us to, to be an image of his eternity. Verse 24 says, Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world, and they that do hold of his side do find it. All right? So what? Through sin. All right? And those that take part of sin. All right? Those that walk according to the ways uh, of Satan. All right? You're going to find, it says, 
And they that do hold of his side do find him. So if you're walking in that way, you're going to find death. All right, but if you're walking in the way of life, all right, you're going to, uh, you're going to receive life. All right? So, like, I got to get another one. It just keeps coming, so I'm going to get it. All right? This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 15, verse 3. It says, For to know thee is perfect righteousness, yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. So to know the Lord is the root of immortality. And that's why we're going to live forever, because we're going to have the true knowledge Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Bashin Yahweh Shai, and what we're going to be able to apply it. The scriptures say wisdom is the principal thing, but with all that getting, get understanding. So we're actually going to be able to apply the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. All right, so what? That means we're going to receive immortality. Read it again. Wisdom of Solomon 15 and 3. For to know thee is perfect righteousness, yea, to know thy power is the root of immortality. All right, and now this is 1 John 3. This is 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of the Most High. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. See, to be a son of the power, to be the son of the Most High, to be an Israelite, that's, that's the ultimate love. It says, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, man. The Lord love us so much that we should be called the sons of the Most High. That's the greatest honor any man can receive. All right? It says, therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. So the world doesn't know what we're doing, what we're a part of, what we're fighting for. All right, because what? They don't know the Lord. They don't know the ways of the Lord. They don't know the Lord at all. Verse 2, it says, beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. See, we're the sons of the Most High. We're the sons of the Most High through this knowledge. Okay? But it says what? It doesn't appear what we shall be because what? The scriptures talk about we have this treasure in earthen vessels, man. We look like regular ordinary men. Okay? And it doesn't appear what we're going to be because we know that what? We're going to be kings and we're going to be gods on this earth. Are right, we going to be glorious? We're going to be jacked. We're going to be tall. We're going to be ripped up full of muscle. We're going to have spiritual power and we're going to have everlasting riches. Okay? But it doesn't appear that way. If you tell a, a, a person, you tell, you meet a woman, right? You meet her, you, 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 uh, you talk to her, ask for a number, you tell her like, yeah, you know, I'm about to be a king. I'm about to be, you know, I'm about to be a god on this earth. Like, you know, rock with me. You know, you get blessed. They just, she's not going to call you back, all right? Because she's not, they don't believe it. It doesn't appear what we shall be, all right? So I'm going to read that again. First John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not, doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. When Yahweh shall returns, we're going to be like him. All right? A ruler, a God, a power, man. All right? It says, for we shall see him as he is, man. All right? We're going to be like our Lord, man, when the Lord returns. So he's going to change us, and we're going to be fashioned like unto his uh, glorious body. Verse 3, it says, And every man that have this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And this, this hope that we have in us, it keeps us pure. It keeps us clean. It keeps us sanctified. All right? Lord's will is edifying video called Hello. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Rukha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone who rule well and who has ties this truth. Shalom wa barakim Peace and blessings to the elect. Shalom.